And uh, first up this week, we have Lost in Space, a little RPG space opera adventure written by Dimitri Raspanov. It is 317 pages, it is $3.99, it is available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. Victor Lost Maskinoff is one of the top common competitors in the popular computer game Sky High, um, Star Sky. Um, he, along with his team, is set to become one of the global champions. But when fame and fortune appear on the horizon, everything begins to fall apart. Everything began to fall apart, I should say. The transfer of Nikita Hig Ostrovsky to the team forces the management to let one of their players go. The lucky one happens to be Victor. He loses his game account and is banned from playing professionally. He looks to his girlfriend for support, only to have her leave him for another man. Victor personal and professional lives have come to an end. Meanwhile, an alien force threatens the human population. They have devised a plan to enslave humanity and indenture them to the service of mercenaries used to scout the galaxy, pillaging and murdering on, on their way, all while under the guise of playing a computer game. Victor resists, fighting on both fronts as the enemy takes command of her special forces. The deeper he plunders into the conspiracy plot, the more he realizes that cheating and treachery never cease. Okay, there you go. That's the novel description. Um, but again, it's 370 pages, $3.90, set available on Kindle Limited. Totally forgot to do that first. Um, this is a light lit RPG story that focuses more on the conspiracy aspects of the, of the story than the action adventure. And that's what you're mainly interested in. I think you actually enjoy this a little bit more than I did. Um, the story revolves around a main character who has this woe is me start of losing his place on a competitive VR team. Um, he gets a chance to work with the government as a beta tester on a new game. And most of this um, early to mid story is him just going on very poorly described missions. Um, many of whose actual details get skipped later, fighting aliens and then working his way up to being a pilot with an amazing ship. Now, um, this is one of the things that kind of bugged me about the story. The author would do a, a single mission to describe a type of, of mission and then he would go on and to say, like, after he repeated a similar type, he would just say, oh, I'm taking this mission type. You'd get some details about, like, the payout and then a dot, 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 and the rewards as he finished it. You you wouldn't actually see the mission anymore in between. And this game had happened again. It was definitely annoying. But it also kind of shows you that the emphasis on the story is not the action adventure. Um, so just be aware of that going in. Um this part of the story is more about him figuring out how to balance his home and work life while maximizing his gaming efforts to do all these missions. There's lots of upgrades to his ship and details about the gaming becoming better with better missions and fleshed out gaming universe. Um, and this section of the story, like I really actually enjoyed the real life aspect of this novel. It was, it was a much better fleshed out than like the game part. Um, and, and it just was, I, I, I like the fact that he had to make a conscious decision on what he's going to spend his cash on. Um, after that point, the story shifts to one of conspiracy as he gets access to information that changes the way he looks at the game. Um, I won't, well, I don't want to say this anymore. I won't spoil things, but it's a well done aspect that makes up for the poorly described missions that are skipped entirely sometimes. Um, and it is, and it's a nice little twist uh, when it, when, when it pops up. And it, was, it wasn't something that I wasn't expecting because I've, I've read enough sci-fi literary stories to kind of see where this was going to go. Um, and the author kind of talks about a little bit of the novel lore, but it was, it was, it was entertaining. Uh, the RPG aspects in the story are pretty light. Um, with levels gained for completing missions and skill points given to specialize, the money and credits awarded for completing missions is actually more important to the story than the experience points. And again, I, I, I say that because it actually has an impact on what the main character does. The, the leveling stuff, he just kind of grinds missions. And that's part of the stuff that I think the author chose to kind of skip in, in describing the different action scenes uh, in that it got... It by necessity was a little bit of grindy, grinding um, for experience points. Um, but those experience points really just felt a little loose. Like he would complete a mission and be like, oh, you've gained level, 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 level. And he would go spend experience points or, going, or he would save them initially, uh, which became like his, his end of the story. Um, but the money aspect was always something that was very detailed and that he had a certain amount of money or credits to spend in a game, either on upgrading his, his, his ship and his skills or he could cash out that money and pay bills. Um, and that was always a more impactful aspect of, of the progression system, I should, I should say. Um, other progression aspects, like the upgrades and the main char uh, to the main character ship are more important and they're flushed out a little more. Like one of the things I really did enjoy is, is just seeing how he was going to pimp out a ship and to see what kind of um, 
class and build he was going to make for that ship in those fights. That was kind of neat. Um, for most of the story, I was kind of on the fence. On one hand, there's a distinct and purposeful lack of detail in the novel, and it really feels like there's that's intention, intentional, that there that there's definitely like specifically a lack of detail. And part of that is how the game progresses, the game world is being fleshed out as the main character plays it in beta. Um, but also just like the lack of detail for these missions. Like I said, one of the things that kind of bugged me the most was I would have a, a, a good action scene or like a decent dish action uh, mission. And then again, the main character would kind of go on similar missions and he would skip all the details. You would just get like, oh, this is the quest. This is the, the mission statement. Here's the reward. And then the end, dot, dot, dot. Oh, look, I won. And I got all this cash. And I was like, that was just kind of frustrating to me. So I'm like, okay. Because again, the other aspects were better fleshed out. Um, see uh however it was still entertaining to see the real life versus gaming aspect go through and i kept waiting for the story's twist to make it worth it and uh, worth the wait some of the story twists did um and they added some nice layers to what was happening in the game however the novel ultimately lost me and it it really just genuinely lost me in the end of at the end of the novel the end is just so frustrating that i just i like i said i was on the fence for most of it was like this definitely kicked me off the fence so i i i this didn't work for me. Um, there's like a really big conflict set up in the beginning of the novel. It's described in the novel description, so I don't have a problem like talking about it. The main character loses his pro gaming spot, right? Um, and without getting too spoiler, he gets a chance to get payback and resolve that conflict. But instead of the resolution being told from his point of view, where you see, oh, um, his feelings, his action, his strategies, you know, like the rest of the novel, um, it that entire section is told from the perspective of some random gaming announcers where they're describing like oh this is the tournament of champions or whatever and they're like this is our, our player and you know that kind of stuff uh and it was just so frustrating um to have this weird perspective shift because it didn't I'm like you, it, there's so much missing from like the feelings of what the main character was doing in it even though occasionally I pop back to the main character's point of view it was just i was just like this is it was just so frustrating and not only that there's this last minute twist and i literally mean last like couple percentages of this novel that it just kind of felt like it came out and I, I mean it's sort of hinted at in a couple places but like the twist was just like oh oh that's what you're going to do to me at the very end thank you um and it totally kind of ruined the story for me because it essentially made all the stuff that came before like oh that doesn't matter anymore and it kind of it definitely conflicts with what I thought was being set up. So it was it was just aggravating in that respect. Um, overall, like I said, for most of the story, I was on the fence between a six and a seven, but the end just pushed me right into six territory. So for me, Lost in Space, a Liberty Space Opera Adventure gets a score of six out of 10.